Hi, this is Stacia. And um, so I'm going to go over a line in the Banco Gambit that I've had some trouble with. And it's a line that features the move F3 on move 5. So it feels similar to a Samish in the King's Indian, although I don't know that this line has a particular name. I haven't seen one. But yeah, I don't think... If you're a Binko Gambit player, I don't think playing normally against this works. So I will show the main line and the ideas in the main line as well. All right, so d4, knight f6, c4, c5. This is a Benoni. White plays d5, and b5 is played. So this is the Binko Gambit. From here, white takes and now a6. And so we are now in the half accepted version of the Banco Gambit. And the normal move here is bishop takes, it, or I'm sorry, b takes a6 is the normal move. b6 is also a move. There's also e3, just defending the pawn with the bishop. And then the move I want to focus on today, which is the move f3. So this move f3, um, it looks strange, but it has a very simple idea, which is to get an e4. And so usually in the Banco, what I see is the knight comes to c3, and the knight on c3 supports the e4 push. And, um, and later, white plays for e5. So in this variation, e4 is now supported by a pawn, and you have this very imposing pawn chain. So it's uncomfortable to play against, <laughs> I'll say that. So in the main line, we simply recapture to start, and white plays e4, following through with their idea. So here, black makes a sort of an unusual move that I might not consider. Black plays the move queen a5 check. And so the idea here is that after bishop d2, we're going to play b4, expanding on the queen side. And, um, okay. So, what should white do here? Well, white's going to play the move knight a3, utilizing the pin. So, um, and also eyeing up the c4 square, which would win a tempo on the queen, and that's an excellent post for the knight. All right. Black plays d6, so just solidifying our pawn chain here. This is a, a move that we often make in the bank, go right in the opening. And now knight c4. So a tempo on the queen. So our queen really doesn't have many options here. Um, pretty much, we're going to be forced to either a7, c7, or maybe d8. And so... Looking at these moves, I really thought c7 looked okay, but the computer says queen d8 is the best, and that is the top move here. So we'll go with queen d8. And okay, I can't say I love black's position here. White has a very imposing center, and they have two pieces developed compared to r1 developed. So... All right, I'm not impressed so far. <laughs> bishop d3 is played. So, yeah, the bishop probably just needs to develop, but it's also um, observing this pawn here. So that makes me wonder if white's going to, at some point, play f4 and e5 with this pawn defended. But that doesn't happen in this main line. e6. And, yeah, so e6. This is a pawn move that... It's sometimes made in the Banco Gambit, but usually black will play um, like g6 and Fanchetto. But it seems to me that e6 is the best way to play in this case because we need to undermine this insane pawn chain. So e6 does that. So we're breaking with e6. This is a pawn break. And... Um, all right, in the lines I looked at, I used the uh, chess base explorer to um, figure out what the top masters are playing. 
and they play d takes e6 here and we play bishop takes e6 so this develops a piece um, interestingly enough the computer wants to take with the f pawn and gives a line with bishop g5 bishop e7 e5 d takes e5 knight takes e5 and this looks scary at first but then um, let's see bishop a6 takes and now taking with the rook is strong pretty sure oh no I'm wrong we have to insert this queen trade first and then when the rook retakes now taking with the rook is strong because pawn and after all is said and done here this is pretty interesting that's why I'm going through this then this pawn is hanging so white has to play an awkward move knight c1 and then knight d5 and like so after all the smoke clears you know I don't know how many moves that was <laughs> that was like eight or nine moves deep into this line but after after all that black looks okay I actually like black's position so I don't think that's intuitive though that f takes e6 looks it looks like why are you making a pawn move <laughs> instead of developing your pieces you know so all right so everyone develops their piece here bishop takes e6 knight e2 this is a developing move also it looks like the knight's going to have you know the knight's going to be able to jump to f4 whenever it wants and hit our bishop all right and now the move d5 i really find this move interesting so this is a pawn break as well and it comes with tempo since we're hitting the knight so it is fairly strong for that reason white pretty much needs to take it's the only real way to deal with this and now we can bring our knight to d5 so suddenly the position looks a lot easier to play um in the lines I play, I never managed to break down this pawn center because I don't like playing e6, but now I see that playing e6 is an integral part of getting anything out of this game. So, yeah, I mean, things are getting better for black. Looks like we're still behind a development. So we have two pieces compared to white's four pieces developed. But if we can survive and get developed... Um, it looks a lot better now. We also have this weakness on c5 that we need to keep an eye on, but the bishop for now is doing that. All right, so white castles. And now bishop e7, so getting ready to castle as well. Queen c2. So, yeah, so white's doing what they should. They should apply pressure and make forcing moves since we're not developed. So, although I don't think they're actually threatening this pawn, which explains the next move, knight c6. So, a developing move. Now, the only thing I don't like about knight c6 is the knight is not guarded. But notice white cannot take here because we could play queen c7. This would pin the bishop to um, this pawn here. And... Um, yeah, even if they play g3, we'll play g6, and this bishop will be lost in a couple moves. Yeah, in fact, the bishop should just sacrifice. And you're going to end up with this kind of position. Which, okay, it looks like white does get three pawns for the piece. And the computer says black's better. Although, the only reason I could think black's better here is that we have the two bishops. So, okay, but let's go back. Um, in the main line, and there's not many games that make it to this point, but let's see if we can get a couple more ideas since we're not fully developed yet. Knight, Bishop e4 is played. So this is setting up a discovery on the knight. Or, I'm sorry, not discovery. It's pinning this knight. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, and the computer move from here is h6, so getting ready to castle without losing the h-pawn. Knight f4 comes in, 
and then castles. So, and this finally completes our development. And as expected, um, the computer says white has a slight advantage in this position, but this is way better than what I get when I play this line. So I do think that going through the main line of openings like this can help um, to figure out what to do in particular lines. And so, all right, I feel better equipped now to deal with this F3 uh, Banco Gambit. Yeah, this move. So what are the main ideas that were learned here? Well, throw in queen a5 check in order to get b4 in. I think that was the point of that. And we're going to play d6, yes. The queen can go back to d8. That is fine here. And then the move e6. This is the main idea, I think. This is the main takeaway, is that e6 must be played in order to undermine this center. Because this center's just too much. And the move d5. That's another move I want to remember. So if we can get that d5 break in and further undermine the center, I think it has to come with tempo on this knight. Then after this, I feel like black's behind in development, but can still get a good game. All right, well, I hope you learned something, and, and um, have a great day. Thank you.